So he didn't know how to sing You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet, so he was doing all these different takes of it. Yeah. And he goes, this you know, this is the Frank Sinatra take, and this is the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and they had, they had a roadie who had a really bad stutter. Yeah. And so he did, he goes, ah, just, you know, this is just fucking with whatever his name is, just make this... You know, goof off. And then the, the it got accidentally that the, the demo reel got sent to the label. And they were like, this is the single. This is a <laughs> Hi, my name is Brooke Pridemore. I live in Brooklyn, New York. Well, I, I, um, I, I am a punk rock, I'm a punk rock slash doom metal slash harsh noise act that presents as a singer songwriter. I try to be like, I try to be like the one solo act on a lot of bills that I'm on. So I've it's that, yeah. so it's like, you know, I write people and I go, Do, is there like a harsh noise scene in your town? Can I play with like, you know, is there like local like Kevin Drum wannabes and stuff, or do you have like a weird like horrorcore rap scene that like are they open or like do you know any metal bands? You know, I started working on this on this new record um, called it's called Metal Is My Only Friend. Um, Cause it's fucking true. Um, metal. <laughs> sometimes, some days, it's what it feels like. Yeah. Okay. I just finished recording. Metal is my only friend. Okay. I played all the instruments on it except for a couple of drum tracks. It's a big mm -hmm. full rock album. I played everything on it. Mm -hmm. But I had all kinds of stuff backed up. I had wanted to do like an album of songs everywhere. Everybody wrote songs for me, and it never really got off the ground. I wanted to do an album of like hardcore folk songs. You know, short. You know to the point and I wanted to do a dance record and, and I went on tour last summer and this was around the time our friend uh, um, our friend Eric Peterson passed you know a couple people close to me died I got in like a hideous bike accident you know all kinds of really weird ugly stuff happened last like the latter half of last year um, and so there was a lot of heavy stuff going on mm -hmm. and I just threw myself into just making just drawing so when it came time to release these songs i was like this weird mod podge ep of songs that didn't belong on the album but are still good right like, i'm like i'm gonna release an ep called breakup songs with horns and i'm gonna that's gonna be the physical release so it's gonna be like a hundred or so one-of-a-kind drawings in you know reasonable frames with a download tape to the back of it mm -hmm. you know I, I i had gotten to this point where I hadn't written songs in a while, and I started writing songs again. And I started writing songs again right as this, this, I was in this relationship that was ending. And my last record is about, uh, um, is about a relationship that had ended. You yeah. know, I was just hung up on this person for a long time. And, um, you know, making that album didn't, didn't make that person see the light, you know? It didn't, like, <laughs> It wow, didn't like, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shocking! And I, I really think that there are, are like a lot of like male presenting people with guitars out there that think that like, well, I'll I'll show her, you know. And I started the, I caught myself starting to write songs about, um, about this person that I really wasn't hung up on. I was actually relieved that it was ending as like quickly and painlessly as it was. I was like, I can't. Do this again. I can't fake my. I can't fake this. These feelings. So I started writing songs about um, trying to learn how to uh, rely on guidance from something bigger than me. The shorthand is I say these are songs about God, and you know people usually do a spit take when I say that. Well, what's you know what's the opposite of overtly? Uh, subtextually, subliminally. Subliminally. Yeah, I would Overtly. say it's subtextually or subliminally yeah. political. I mean, yeah, you wouldn't sing something if it didn't mean something to you. Yeah, you know. It's like, what's your favorite Reagan Youth song? I, know. I, I, I gotta be honest, I never really listened to Reagan Youth. And, and do you know why? <laughs> it's because they've been they started in the '80s as a result uh, as a reaction to Reagan's presidency. You can't just sing what's in the paper. Yeah. You know, the first two lines are of who's going to build my death ray. The night sky's teeming with an army of dressed up clones, and I'm still sleeping on a pile of broken bones. My last apartment before this one is a block that way, right under the J train. And, you know, I'm sleeping on a futon. 33 years old, sleeping on a fucking futon. And you look out the door, and there's these, there's these kind of people moving into the neighborhood. That, the kind of people that carry their dog. 
I have no problem with an art community happening. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, they need them, and I know that I'm part of that. Um, and I don't have a solution by any means, but you know, watching things change to the point where you can't live here anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just it just it bu was bu was bumming me out. So I'm like, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna scream about this thing, and nobody knows what the fuck I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Nobody has ever asked me. What the fuck am I talking about? But that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And this is my problem. That's why I started touring again was because it was like heavy stuff that it was like, eh, maybe people need to hear that. One, one, two, one. Learning to love.